But firstly, where uh, our conversations, um, we should uh, know what space exploration is. Uh, space exploration is the searching and investigating of the area from the exosphere of uh, our Earth to the furthest reaches uh, of the, expo um, of the uh, expanding universe. Um, so today, from our side, we believe that any source and any kind of funding of space explorations should be stopped. Uh, and these are the main reasons for that. The first is, in the, is uh, the environmental factor. Um, the ozone layer that uh, surrounds the, no, thank you. That surrounds the Earth is now uh, is now very very thin. Um, so our ecology uh, on on our planet uh, we li uh, w uh, on, on the planet we live on um, is getting wor uh, is getting worse and worse. And one of the factors that uh, gets th that uh, makes it worse is the is, spa uh, is uh, spaceships that uh, land from the Earth to the outer space. Um, uh, it uh, when uh, the rocket crosses Madam. no thank you uh, when the rocket crosses the ozone layer it leaves very 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 big holes in it. Um, so the sun radiation could. Um, uh, so the, so Madam. Yes, please. So the gas. Uh, so the from uh, gas that we get from oil cause the uh, the uh, drop uh, holes in the ozone layer, not the fact that the uh, rockets go. When the when the rockets uh, when the rocket crosses the ozone layer, it leaves great holes in it. Uh, and um, yes, it's very well, well known fact. Um, uh, the, sec the second reason, uh, the second reason for um, for uh, the, uh, the second reason uh, for banning uh, space explorations uh, in ca in case of the environmental factor um, is that uh, is that the fuel that the rockets use is highly toxic and dangerous chemicals. Um, it, uh, it spoils the soil. Uh, it, it, it spoils the soil. It gets in, and it. Uh, and in any case, it gets in the soil uh, when the rocket uh, when the rocket uh, starts from the earth, um, and um, and it, uh, and uh, it spoils not only soil but the water that is in the soil and uh, the, the water we drink. Um, that chem that chemicals cause cancer and uh, many other dangerous uh, diseases um, another uh, another really? thing, no thank you another thing is space derbies um, that a rocket leaves when uh, when it crosses um, uh, uh, when it crosses the ozone layer that um, uh, this this derbies is flying around the earth and uh, it's uh, this de this derbies are uh, Crashes into uh, shuttles and uh, rockets that are on um, that are in the uh, that are in the uh, who, which are in the atmosphere. Um, so uh, only uh, only this year, uh, in 2013, uh, the two rockets fell on the Earth because of space derbies. Um, uh, uh, the other reason for banning, yes, please. What about space exploration that is done from the Earth? Um, space, uh, space exploration, uh, which is done uh, from the uh, which is done from the Earth, um, is about ten percent of of uh, the whole of space explorations. Um, uh, well, uh, I, I don't quite understand what do you mean by uh, space exploration made from the Earth. Um, is it uh, the way we uh, the, w the way uh, space explorers uh, find uh, try to find any other aliens uh, any, any aliens or any kind of uh, living creatures? Answer? Yes, please. Uh, s uh, looking at the sky from with a telescope, looking at the videos that satellites it's record. It's mm -hmm. not the space exploration. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we found. Uh, that's, not, that's not the exploration, actually, public funds. Mm -hmm. 
the main and the main uh, thing we, we and the main thing they do uh, when uh, to, to explore uh, the outer space from as you said telescope is Hubble that actually flies uh, outside this uh, outside the Earth. Uh, and uh, it and it actually caused uh, a hole in the ozone layer, as I said before. Um, the second, uh, we are sorry for that. Um, uh, the second reason sorry. is that um, the futility of research uh, uh, is the futility of research and uh, indifference of society. Um, uh, from the middle 90s, uh, space explorers did not um, make any new researches. They just uh, change uh, some. Uh, Madam? Yes, please. In 2008, there was a discovery of water on the moon. How is that not new discovery and after 90s? Mm -hmm. um, I, do, um, I don't quite understand. Wait, wait. In 2008, five years ago, it was discovered that there are water in ice cubes on the moon. How is that a new discovery after 90s? Um, okay, how can it uh, be a profit for us? Uh, we ca we can't uh, uh, if you if you say we can we can live on moon we can't live on moon actually so the water on moon is not uh, really profitable for us. Uh, uh, I can answer. Yes. This water moon can be used for uh, to make a liquid uh, with a liquid hydrogen, hydrogen, which is used as rocket fuels, so we can make rocket fuel on the moon and then fly back without the endangered environment. Um, it's uh, not re it's uh, not really valuable. The m it's uh, it's about very little percent of all the space operations we talk about today, um, uh, and. Uh, uh, now, uh, now there are uh, there are no any uh, there are no any uh, exciting new uh, researches uh, that uh, space explorers done. Um, they just uh, change some uh, pieces uh, of uh, this uh, of uh, the old satellites. Uh, they do what they did before. Um, actually, anything new. They. Uh, uh, they uh, they uh, recent, recently they started uh, uh, they sent a satellite on the Mars which was done before there is the third satellite that is now on Mars but the, the first two were uh, broken and uh, I think the third will be too um, uh, so uh, it uh, so the space explorations uh, the space exploration um, doesn't have any profit for uh, the people and um, it does not improve the life of us. It's uh, just useless and for um, for the interest. And uh, the the main the seventy six percent of uh, the people who live on Earth, as the statistics, uh, think that they don't need that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we thank the lady for her speech and we call up the first member of team opposition, uh, Lobro. Yeah. Yeah. There is no future of human race without exploring the universe. The universe can be great danger in the same time, while it can be the great opportunity for, for human race to develop and to stay uh, living as it's living now. So I'm Nova, I'm the first speaker of opposition in this debate, and in, uh, in my team there are also Dora as second speaker, and Anna as third speaker. So in my case, in my speech, I will firstly go through uh, every point uh, that my colleague uh, from the propositional side said, and after that I will present you our first constructive argument, that is called future of human race, and in the second in the second speech of uh, opposition, you will hear the argument called public interest. So, to start, the first thing I must say in this debate that we fully agree with the values that uh, proposition stand for in this debate. They said that uh, that they stand behind um, 
uh, values of improving uh, life of every uh, individual in the world. In the world, we fully agree with it. But the thing is that with their plan, as they uh, made argumentation on it, they don't fulfill it. And I think that uh, only our case in this debate will fulfill it. So, uh, first thing we heard is that rockets made ho holes in the uh, in the ozone layer when they go to the universe. Well, that's not true. The thing is, I can show you uh, now is that ozone layer is a layer of uh, 40 kilometers of uh, ozone ga gas oxygen. So the thing is that uh, when a rocket comes through it, well, it's it's not making any holes because it's a gas. The uh, way when when we make those holes is uh, by too much uh, too much of uh, poison gases like CO2, etc., etc., which are not made by rockets in any way, which are made by industry on the world. You know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. What about the gases which those rockets produce and they really I destroy it that also Yeah, I will tell it now. Well, as I know, well, I'm sure 100% of it, every rocket in the today's world uh, goes on uh, liquid hydrogen. Well, liquid hydrogen, mm -hmm. when it reacts, when it burns in oxygen, it makes water. It makes nothing except water. So it means that uh, whenever a rocket goes to, uh, to the space, there is no poison gases at all. The thing is that uh, all of there is a story about the, uh, about the rockets which, uh, which endanger the ozone, which endanger the ecology of the Earth. Place. No, thank you. Uh, the doesn't stand from a scientific, uh, scientific point of view. Well, uh, after that, uh, uh, there, that's not the only reason. Uh, I, that's not the only thing I want to say on this. The second thing is that no matter if they even, maybe, uh, well, they not, but uh, if we suppose that they produce some kind of g g poison gases, you know that rocket, uh, uh, rockets are going from Earth really, really rarely. The thing is, that I don't know when uh, the, the NASA sent uh, the last the last Apollo or the last Please. spaceship to the Earth. No, thank you. Uh, because the thing is, the real reality is that uh, those kind of things cannot be compared in any way. No, thank you. Uh, with the re uh, real real uh, producers of poisoning gases in uh, in the world, with the real uh, uh, people who endanger the ecology on the uh, on the world. So. After that, they said, uh, uh, like uh, an answer in our POI, that space explorations from Earth are really early, uh, that they uh, made 10% ten, ten of it. The thing is, here, the, I wanted to say to you that uh, the most of space explorations is made from the Earth. You know, on Andas, you have like 100, uh, 100 big telescopes for watching the Earth, uh, for watching the uh, universe, because you know it's really high on the mountain, so they can uh, watch it uh, uh, really, really easily. And comparing to only one telescope in the in, in the universe, which is Hubble. Uh, so the reality is that the 99% of uh, uh, exploration of the universe is made from the uh, from the Earth. And, no, thank you. And uh, well, in the end, while talking about their case, uh, I can ask one question to the uh, proposition. What about satellites which are uh, uh, going to the universe? They are not space explorations. They are satellites used for telecommunications. No, thank you. They are, no, thank you. They are used for telecommunication. They are in any way, they are not in any way space exploration. So, uh, if we uh, even uh, ban them also, uh, in, in, uh, no, thank you, for funding, for funding uh, by public money, uh, the reality is, you know, that uh, satellites are sent by private companies, by private com telecommunication, no thank you, telecommunication, no thank you, telecommunication companies, which uh, we send them uh, just to make profit, to make money, to, uh, to make uh, telecommunication on Earth Point, sir. easier. So, Point, uh, please. now I'm going, okay, I will give you, if you are so interested, um, yeah. We did not talk. Uh, we didn't say that uh, the satellites, which uh, uh, which are for the television or internet or um, our telephones, uh, are the space explorations. We didn't say that uh, we s we should stop them. And you, uh, just yeah, I agree with that. The yes, problem is that you won't stop them. You know, just that. It's, that's uh, because that's not the space exploration. Yeah, yeah, that's not the space exploration, and they are not going to ban them. You know, they are not going to ban them, and there are much more satellites in the universe that have the same. Actually, then going to the uh, to the uh, uh, universe, 
than the space explorations, you know, yeah, because for every satellite you need a rocket to, to take it up. Uh, to take it up. Well, the, uh, why did they agree now? The thing is they won't ban it, and uh, most of the sendings uh, to the universe is made for the satellites, and not only that, but not from the uh, public fundings, from private fundings of uh, big telecommunication companies. So now I'm going to our first constructive arguments, and only in this in this um, speech that is called future of human race. Well, as I already said. Universe is really, really big. Uh, it's, uh, it can give, give us so much opportunities, and at the same time, it can be really dangerous. As Stephen Hawking said, the thing is, for human future, that in the near future, it will, it will be really probable that some asteroid come uh, and destroy us like they it destroyed animals. Well, and at the same time, uh, no thank you, uh, most of the scientists agree that uh, the future of human race is in exploring the universe, in finding uh, some other place for living in the whole universe. So we, uh, here, I, uh, as you probably uh, saw, I have two points on this argument. First is asteroid threat. Well, the thing is, uh, if we don't explore the universe, if we don't have uh, telescopes in the universe, we don't have any kind of exploring it, it, it we cannot see any uh, probable asteroid, asteroid that can come to the Earth, and that means that we cannot uh, uh, get rid of them be before it comes to the Earth and kills us, everybody. And the second thing that I'm saying is here in his, uh, this argument uh, is about finding a new place for live. If even I still come, if even we uh, 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 aren't able to uh, uh, get rid of it, we can go to some other planet. But with their plan, we can't because we don't know for any other planet. Today, we don't still not know for any other planet, but maybe in future, with uh, growing of technology, with investing in uh, space explorations, we will find some other uh, planet, we will find some measures for asteroids, and you know, we will uh, make a human race to live longer. Not only 1,000 or 2,000 years in future, but maybe 100,000 years in future, or billions in future. So the thing is, here we are the only side which stands behind, uh, behind the attitude that uh, human race must stay alive, and you know, with their plan, uh, they are uh, not showing any kind of protection to the uh, uh, world in global, in global uh, things and in uh, universe as such. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm the second speaker of the proposition team and I'm here to prove you that the side of opposition failed from the very beginning of their game. First of all, the main point was a big contradiction about the satellites. This uh, handsome man was talking about the satellites, which actually are not elements of space exploration and he was saying that we should ban them and what's the point if they are not relevant to that topic, so I think that it's just irrelevant and we cannot speak about those satellites and our team does not understand what it was for. <coughs> Actually, and let's start from the refutation. First of all, uh, one very interesting thing which, uh, thing which was presented on the last seconds of, the, of his speech was about the finding of new place to live. And that was very interesting because uh, those guys propose us to spend millions and billions of dollars, billions of euros to find a new place to live instead of making those billions and uh, millions of people to increase the level of the life in the earth, dear ladies and gentlemen. No, thank you. So, moreover, uh, one more point about the first argument which was actually presented uh, by the side of opposition was about the, uh, about the future of human race, was about the asteroid threat. So, and uh, those guys propose us to um, continue those space explorations because those um, satellites and something like that, those uh, space objects, they can help us uh, to get safe from those asteroids. But we can see the situation which happened really uh, not, not so long time ago, and uh, the situation in Chelyabinsk. Actually, the government and uh, uh, important people of the Russia, they knew about the 
um, about the threat of that mit, uh, meteor, meteor. Meteor, meteor, but what can we say? Noth they, can ha they can do nothing for that. And we are not on this yeah, stage yeah. now, thank you. And we cannot prevent it. And uh, how, and if we just uh, know that, so what, what are the benefits for that? And um, moreover, and about the reputation of the opposition side, they were talking that every rocket, and they know that for sure, that every rocket on the Earth uses the hydrogen, but I am not so sure about it, because we can think um, about the Russia, an example of Russia, which is one of the most uh, important space exploration countries in the whole world, and I am sure, because I live near it, and I'm sure because a lot of information we know about the Russia, and they do not use those uh, modern, they do not use those modern equipment. And one more point which was said about that, that uh, they send those um, space objects very rare. And if, it, if they send them very and very rare, so what is the point to spend uh, two, three, four, and sometimes in some countries even four, percent of the of the uh, of the year budget to expect uh, to, to explore it mm -hmm. so if they send it just maybe once um, in the in the 10 years so uh, sorry so moreover it was talking um, uh, he was talking about the telescope but how many how much percent of that information of the information about the uh, space exploration are we getting from that telescope it would be a very nice uh, thing to know if only three or maybe three percent of that uh, are going to us with the help of the telescope. And now talking about my constructive speech, dear ladies and gentlemen, the side of opposition, uh, the side of proposition is going to win this debate because we are very sure that uh, we should stop any source of funding of space exploration because of the three main reasons which were proposed by our first speaker. So, first of all, it's an environmental factor, and our opponents lose, and they failed to prove that there is no threat for that. And we all can know about the destroyment of the ozone layer, which happens due to those uh, very and very dangerous gases which those rockets uh, produce, and moreover, there is, uh, a, uh, there is a big problem of the space uh, rubbish, which was, uh, which was even given a status of the global problem, even in 1993, ladies and gentlemen, and we can just know how are the um, sizes of that problem for now, after 10 years of that. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, moreover, the second reason of stopping that public uh, that foundation of uh, space exploration is about the lack of interest among the society. The society is not interested in that. And during the last years, we cannot see any development in the case of the space exploration. Um, and we can see that uh, there is a big crisis in NASA because they do not have any aims, they, can, they do not know what to do with that, and they do not know where to send their rockets and where can they what and where can they find. And moreover, there is a big lack of interest among the society. Maybe in 1960s, there was a, a big uh, interested, big interest, uh, especially um, um, among the young people, and everyone said, yeah, I want to be, become an astronaut, but after the first uh, person, um, came to the moon, yeah, sorry. Um, now we can see that uh, no people are no people want to go there, and most of them want to become managers. One, or most of them want to become lawyers. And uh, if you ask any people at the street about uh, what was the last space um, space uh, invention, the last space discoveries in uh, the period of ten years, nobody is going to give you the answers because nobody is really interested in it. And uh, moreover, yeah. Do you think it's important to know who won the Nobel Prize and people still do not know it? You know that... Uh, can you repeat, please? It is important to know well, who won the Nobel Prize and yet people do not know it. It has nothing to do with space exploration. Gosh, What's your which, which Nobel Prize? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's hard to understand. Can you say it in other words? I'm, I'm very sorry. Oh, okay. sorry. 
I, I'm really sorry for that, sorry for my English. And um, I guess that's a problem, and the question was about, is that important to know all the people who won Nobel Prizes? Uh, you know, maybe it is not, but those people who know something about, uh, for example, if you um, go well in physics, you probably know who wants this and you probably know for what. And uh, actually we can see that nobody cares, by the way. And moreover, there is a third and very important argument about uh, the destroyment of the space. Uh, not sorry. The problem is that space is going to destroy us, and more, um, and our third speaker is going to say more about it. And making a little conclusion about that, we can see that the side of opposition absolutely failed to prove their side because actually they were confusing, they were confusing, they were contradicting themselves, and they didn't have enough information about the situation in the whole world to prove that we should provide that space exploration. Thank you. Okay, we thank the lady for her speech and we welcome up uh, Dora from the opposition. on the motion that obvious the government has forgot, and is that this house will stop public funding of space exploration. In order to prove their burden, they should have told us, okay, in the moment when we have public funding of space exploration, we are either endangering space, space exploration or endangering the public. They haven't done any of this. They have just played thousands of, not thousands, three, false, uh, th false argumentations and false uh, statistics about how it uh, actually endangers the um, climate on Earth, climate on Earth and Earth uh, environment, which is not true. And I will show it to you through following structure. First, I will do the rebuttal on um, on uh, five points they have done. Then I will uh, defend our argument, which is human, the future of human race. And if uh, I will do well with time management, around five fifteen minutes, I will start with my second argument, which is public interest. So I have a lot to do. So I should start first about the satellites. So there are thousands of satellites that are here just for tele telecommunications, just for um, just for uh, GPSs, and there is hmm, one space station for the exploration of space. Now the thing that we want to say that, that even if everything they said was true about the gases and about the pollution, there is still that. Uh, Settlements that they are not stopping from coming, that are still causing the ozone holes, which are not actually caused, and they are still actually not doing anything because they uh, because they ruined and screwed themselves with the satellites, uh, satellites uh, story. Okay. Now, uh, the second thing, no, thank you, that I want to talk about is actually about the hydrogen and ozone. I hate this because it's completely logical that yes, Russia uses hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, because it's cheap. They will not use anything else. Everyone uses it. It's in the Kyoto contract. And Point therefore, please. no, thank you. Point, please. No, thank you. Unless you no, thank you once, you don't raise your hand again. Uh, now, and second thing about the ozone, the ozone is actually molecules of ozone. That, if rocket would leave a hole after it went, it would actually be when I walk through this room, I leave a hole in the air. Can you leave a hole in the air? You cannot. But you can destroy the molecules of ozone with CO2, which was already shown in the first speech. So therefore, this uh, part about pollution is completely destroyed now, rebuttal, and they cannot actually say anything, and that will bring them up. Now they were talking about space rubbish, or well, space rubbish comes from space, so then again, with their case, they are not stopping it. Now, the biggest, uh, and actually the only relevant uh, idea that they had in their second government speech was that society is not interesting. Well, it's interested in space exploration. Well, I will not tell you, firstly, that society is not interested in general, in anything in general. The only thing that society wants is, I don't know, their buses and time and their taxes and all, but still, there is government here that uses public fundings through taxes 
to then give the money to the space because they know what is in the interest of the public itself. They know what is good for the public and therefore they contribute to it with through the public fund. Now, point please. Uh, no, thank you. The point of Nobel Prize was that Nobel Prize is something that you give to one scientist through uh, five areas. And yet no one today knows who the hell wins Nobel Prize. But it doesn't make it less important. So the point of that argument was the fact that society doesn't know any, doesn't know a lot about say, space exploration. It doesn't mean that space exploration as it what is not important. No, thank you. So the last uh, they asked, uh, who knows when was the last uh, rocket that was sent from uh, the NASA uh, in ten years? I know it. It was in 2008. It were two sondas that were sent to the moon, uh, which used to, uh, which were used to discover what kind of route there was in the moon. And since they're debating the explosion, they should have known it also. No, thank you. Now, what have they discovered there? They have discovered that there is actually ice water on the moon, which could mean that one day in the future we could actually terraform the moon. Yes, that is one big plan that could be maybe in 50, 60 years realized. But then we have the point of our second argument, which is, if you have heard from Stephen Hawking, which is one very, um, a very, very famous scientist, he said that there is a bigger chance that we will get hit by asteroid and die on that way rather than from global warming. And yes, we should do something. We should find another Good place, place to live. No, uh, another place to live. I will ask you in a second. Another place to live because on that way we are actually doing something that's good, and we can do it through space exploration. But we need to find it on some way. Yes. Uh, you said that we'd rather die from the global warming than from those asteroids. Yeah. No, no. I said that there is a bigger chance of dying from the asteroids than from global warming. Oh, and sorry. Stephen Hawking proved it. I cannot prove it to you right now because that's 500 pages of the book and I have only 8 minutes. Now, um, what I would like to say next is that when it comes to uh, funding of space, we have two options. First option is public funding of space. Second option is private public of space. Now, when it uh, says we have not heard any of the statistics from that and we should have heard, NASA today has a lot of things, uh, uh, has uh, discovered a lot of things. They do a lot of researches, and do you know what, what budget they have? They do not have even 1% of the budget. They have 0.0625%. That's one, six, one through 16 of every cent that is in the, uh, uh, in the budget of the United States. So, no thank you. So on that way we show that NASA is really doing great things with so little amount of public space. What would, it, what would happen if they had one quarter of every cent given to, uh, given to them? They would do even much better things and what they should and it should be public because, uh, because of our second, uh, because of first argument which is future of human race which is to be uh, preserved so we could reach our both countries which improve life of every single individual. And since, since every single individual, it should be what else then? Coming from every single individual and that is called public. Now, it is also in public interest, and now through the second argument, I'll show you why public, why public is the one that should be investing in this. So, what happens if we have private investment? If we have private investment, that means that private individual can, through capitalism, actually endanger every single thing he discovers and use it for bad purposes. Yes? Uh, I think you misunderstood us because our first speaker in his very, very few uh, minutes of your speech, uh, she mentioned that we are talking about stopping funding yeah. of the space yes, at yes, all. Yes, yes. So, it's stop public funding of space. You cannot do this motion, proposal to this motion, stop private investment. If I'm rich, if I'm uh, if I'm rich and I want to have a freaking satellite on, uh, in the uh, universe, I will have it either if you propose the motion or if you don't. Now, if we have the private investment, like I said, through capitalism, they can endanger everything they discover and use it for the bad purposes. But if we have it from the public foundation, if it's in public, it will not be sponsored by just one person. It will be coming from a larger group of people, and in that way, when the benefits of it come, it will serve everyone. And now the benefits of the uh, space exploration are in generally to serve everyone because there isn't some like we can discover a lot of things in the universe but there is not one thing that we can discover that will that will actually be just for a group of people. What we can we discover in the universe? We can discover um, alternative for using oil, which will affect everyone. We can discover that there are aliens which can affect everyone. We can discover that we can live on another planet. 
which can affect everyone. What affects everyone, what will give bad or good consequences to everyone, should be sponsored by everyone. That, and when we say everyone, we mean public, not private investment. And private investment is the opposite of public, and they cannot stop it with the proposal of this notion. So what have I shown you to the, 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 here in this debate? First, I have shown you that everything they said is not actually connected to the motion. They're just saying that somehow, with false uh, argumentation and uh, logical fallacies, please, quiet, with false uh, with logical fallacies, they're actually, um, they say that uh, space exploration causes uh, the damaging of the Earth, the pollution, which is not true. Space exploration can give us only benefits, and if we, sp if we give it from the public funding, even this little, it can still be a lot, and it st still should be from the public uh, space funding, because it is something very important that we should uh, cherish. Thank you. Uh, we thank the lady for her speech and we'd like to call up the first speaker of Team Proposition, um, Karina. Yeah. Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Katerina Orlova and today I'm the third speaker of the team Token Heads. First of all, I want to start from the words of Hogan. By the way, Hogan said, um, had different opinions and he said that uh, space can destroy our lives because there are a lot of viruses in the space and when uh, it comes with their rockets to our planet, it can uh, it can affect everyone at our planet. And what I want to say um, as another point, uh, I agree with our second speaker that not every rocket uses uh, hydro hydrogen. Excuse me, hydrogen. Another one. If satellites are not space exploration, why did you mention it in your speech? It is not connected with our motion. Another one. You said that if we spend uh, a lot of money for the space exploration in this fact, there are no uh, asteroids coming to the Earth. But you know, there are a lot of space bodies uh, fall to our planet. And why we did not stop it before? Wait, no, thank you. Another one. You know, uh, there is a big crisis of stuff for the space exploration in Russia. And uh, they even uh, try to find, um, find this stuff uh, between the just people uh, at the street. Another one. Uh, if the society not interested, you agree with us, why we must do this? Why we must spend money? You know, the society spend their money. Not only <laughs> Down, please. Another one. How can we stop asteroids and comets? You know, actually, of comets we know uh, for the weeks, not for the years. It, it is hard to do it. We can uh, solve the problem only when comets uh, has fall on the Earth, not before it. So, I want to uh, rebuild our team line. And I want to uh, continue our third argument. What has been happened last time? Do you know how many exoplanets, we, um, the planets which are outside the solar system, has been discovered? 2,321 worlds out of the Earth has been discovered after launching the orbit telescope um, Kepler. That is, today we are located more or less in the space and uh, where, uh, where are our extraterrestrial friends live, who have got people regularly. No, thank you. And draw circles on the fields, as we know, of course. Let's remember how often orbital telescope Hubble pre predecessor Kepler has been broken. It has been fixed many uh, times on the orbit until it passed away. During the repair, astronauts noticed a UFO which has been flying around and they even marked it in the documents. But soon the telescope Kel Kepler has been launched, whose visibility was strangely deteriorated by 5%. And uh, in 2012, um, suddenly brought down one of the engines, 
uh, responsible for restoring of the telescope. Most likely, in the near future, there will be a lot of problems. And in this fact, we have not any money for soul it, because we have already spent it for our telescopes, for our satellites. By the way, I don't quite know. Please, please, of course. Can you tell me what will happen to the telescope in the future with that telescope we're talking about? The broken one. The broken one. The broken one? I have already told it. What telescope? Can you name it? Hubble or Kepler. Hubble or Kepler? What? What one? Okay. So. During our motion, I want uh, to persuade you that in our future we don't need to uh, explore space anymore. Because for what? There are a lot of money, but we just want to win this game. Every country just want to be the best and the first in this. Not this, not this one. What is? If every country wants that, why do we have ESA, which is uh, the connection of every single European country discovering the universe together? Why do, we have e why do we have ESA, which is like NASA, but from Europe, in which every country of Europe discovers the universe together if everyone wants to be the first? Okay. You know, by the way, every government wants to be the first. And n not only in us, and during this speech you didn't tell us why we must explore it. You just tell us about satellites, you just tell us about, uh, about awesome lawyers, <coughs> not about something new. Another one. No, another one point, excuse me. I want to say that changes of, of encounter are less the changes, uh, the chances of accident. Why we must do this? You know, the Earth has been formed by asteroids since the creation, and it will continue. Why we must, uh, why we must pay for it? Because we, we didn't, we didn't see this money. Thank you for attention. Can I actually have some water? I don't have any water. I guess that's fine. It's well. It's right. Oh, okay. It's nothing else. It's right. Okay. Can I have Yeah, yeah. Thanks. What else can I speak? Oh, I need it right now. <coughs> what are you saying? <laughs> it's worse. But no. It's very good. Yeah. So thanks. Bye. 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 Okay, uh, we thank the lady for her speech, and we'd like to call up the first speaker of team opposition, Anna. Okay. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, you confused me a bit. Anyway, so what are they saying here is. First, the thing that did, they did agree about the, what the Stephen Hawking said about the how actually space can endanger us. And on the, on the other hand, that they are saying is, okay, yeah, they can endanger it, but let's not explore it. That's a bit of a contradictory. If it's something dangerous, you should know what's going on in the space. And the second thing what they are saying is, when a satellite breaks or when the rockets broke, the things fall down on the Earth. Well. Next debate you should do research, as far as everyone here knows, is that in space there is no gravi gravitation, and that way nothing is going to fall down on the Earth. And even if stars, is even if in some other way, whatever theory or whatever, however it's going to be possible, if it's going to fall down, it's going to burn in the atmosphere just like <coughs> shooting stars are burning. Now, thank you. Moving on is like they are saying. But that uh, uh, like humans are not interested in the space exploration. Okay, another thing that I'm gonna tell you, 
Tell me a one student, uh, like at least 15% uh, of students that are interested and uh, want to go to school. Chill doesn't want to go to school, but doesn't mean that we should ban it. The thing is that it's good for them. And the thing is, if the, something is good for everybody, as we told you, it, it should be uh, financed by the public and by the everyone. And the second thing, as we all know, or at, at least I hope that you know, NASA is the one of the, uh, has a lot of money, right? And as we did tell you, and you didn't rebuttal that fact, is that 0.0625, it's less than 1% of the money from USA budgets go to the NASA. And that's the fact that they're still standing, and that's not a lot of money, but it still can, no thank you, can still prove uh, something, and it, should, it's, it will still do something good for the for the earth. And that's a really point. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll go on. Uh, first of all, what was the uh, what was the date of that information? Because the newest information was concerning 3.5 percent of the budget of the USA spending money for okay, the yeah, yeah, space program. The same as you're saying that the Russia is not using the liquid oxygen. Like the thing is that they are using, and the thing is that's the right percent of it. And um, and another thing, what they said is. Okay, the government wants to be the first, and etc., and etc., and they want to be the best. Okay, then why do we have ESA? And I guess you don't know what that is because you didn't uh, battle it and didn't answer it on the point. What's the European Space Association? It's association of the whole European, and they are trying, they are putting their budget in order to for a space exploration. And why are they doing that? Because they are aware that they either you have in danger of uh, uh, of space in my. my do some uh, like space might do something bad. I know aliens can come to the earth and kill us all. Or either on the other hand, you can find something useful. And the, the fact is still sending that you, you didn't rebuttal is that the future of our human race would be better if if we figure out how should we either protect from the aliens, or on the other hand, if we are capable to move on the that other was. planet. No, thank you. As uh, as for example, like uh, as we did told you that we discovered a water on the Mars, Mars, right? Yeah, and um, and the thing is that uh, water is important. It means that kind of is. Uh, uh, it, it means that we might be capable of living there, and that's the thing that we should do because, like as you said not by the rockets, but we do have ozone layers, and it, it, it might can, I don't know, kill us or whatever, have cancer, but always not from the rockets. And the thing, even if it's from the rockets, the point is still standing that satellites used for, I guess you didn't understand that, satellites used for GPS and uh, telecommunications are still has to go to the uh, universe. And the thing is, they're not, dragons are not going to put them in the universe, rockets will. So even if you're going, to, even if we have ozone layers, it's going to go by the rockets, even if you can have a, a put a hole, get a hole in a ozone layer by a rocket, it's still going to be there. But the thing is, you don't just can't do that because you cannot Point put place. a hole in a, uh, a, a, the gas. Okay, so what we are saying to you that uh, after all that our, uh, that they didn't prove that our burden, their burden, sorry. Um, what they only are saying, first of all, false, uh, false points about how, uh, ex uh, like, l about how, um, how it actually affects to the environment, and the second thing they didn't connect it at all with the topic, which we we want to ask them why why that has to do with uh, with the public, uh, what does that have to, has to do with public funding, and the thing is. Even if they kind of, whatever did they say about their environment, what they keep saying is, they can still happen that after all with rockets for the satellites, those unexistable hole in ozone layer, and the second thing is, I know, by privates who might do that, so it's opposite of the public uh, funding. Um, and after all, like, they just didn't do that. Um, and so the second, uh, second, what we are saying to you is that, like, okay, we are not really truly aware what what's going on, right, in the space exploration because it's big, and and we, but we should be uh, uh, aware of it because it it might okay, yeah, as I do repeat myself, as it might endanger us and it might help us, so we need that. Uh, okay, uh, keep going on. Oh, yes. 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 Uh, how putting a flag on the moon, which was actually made by Louis Armstrong, is going to help the Earth? 
So what would I didn't say that? You said that space can help us, yeah? How can the flag of the uh, okay, of the okay. of the moon has It's not a thing about the flag, it's the thing about water, for example. Or whatever we can find there, or uh, it, it can help us. Like we found the water, and water is the one thing that we are not capable to live without. That we are made of water, and if, we, if something that we found that we are made of, of no thank you, is, is not good for us, then what is good for us? Like, we have water in ourselves, and it's also an like, important thing that we were like saying to you. What okay, but... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yes, there is a water on the moon, but you uh, you think that they uh, okay. the space explorers w uh, will take it from the moon to the earth? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that might if something happened to the earth, we are going to move to that planet and have water there. Now you're not going to bring water on the earth if you have a, a water on the earth, but you might have to move yourself out of the earth because the fact is we are destroying the earth or whatever. Like we have those whole, uh, uh, holes, you know, the layers. But, uh, not many from us. Um, okay, so. Um, what we are proving to you that after all the old didn't do that, that their burdens right uh, correctly and the, th the second thing that we are proving you even whatever they are saying like i'm trying to prove which is not connected to the motion after all is still not standing uh, dear judges and it's still not standing because those statistics are false and that and, there are, uh, and, um, and the, the fact is that we do need those space exploration. And the, another thing that they were saying is that we are not good, and they didn't rebuttal that, and they said it on the first page, or I don't know, in point, that they don't have, a, that we are going to do the space exploration from the, from the Earth. And the main point, point from it is like, yeah, we do, it's the, the main thing that we are doing. So it's like, as we said, the. Okay, I'm out of the time. Uh, after all, what I'm saying to you, dear judge, is that we should oppose the motion um, because the, 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 it's really important to know what's going to happen in future for us. Thank you. Thank the lady for her speech, and we'd like to call up the uh, reply speaker of Team Proposition. to hear what will they actually do and how will the uh, public funding of space exploration endanger anything or has endangered anything in the past, even 100 years ago. So they could have now actually a relevant reason and reasonable argumentation to stop it. Because to stop public, of, uh, public funding of space means that not one government will ever give one cent or one leap in Croatia to the space exploration. And unfortunately, we have not heard that. And among everything we have heard, we heard a lot of things which were called irrelevant questions. Unfortunately, as a reply speaker, we'll just mention them because we heard about them too many times for me to explain now. So it was about satellites, which will still be there. It was about pollution, which has higher costs. 
it was about parts of rockets falling on the Earth, which is false, because there's no gravitation in the space. And even if they get into the atmosphere, they burn. Now the two clashes that we actually call clashes were about, is society actually interested in that, and the lack of money. Now, we believe that the reason that society is not interested in doing something does not mean that society or public should not be funding it. Because, let's be real, society today is not interested in anything. We have an example with school. No one wants to go to school, but hey, we realize that it's good for us, so therefore we do it. Therefore we go for it, because when you're seven, you do not understand it. You must learn. And right now, we don't understand that one day we will not be able to live on the Earth anymore. But we must be aware of it. We must be aware of the fact that one day, well, this Earth will not be enough for us. We have almost overpopulation with pollution. We have so many problems with global changing, and we have to find our solution. Now, the second, uh, the second clash was with the lack of money. Now, we believe that it is not a lot of money that is actually invested invested in the space exploration as itself. And we showed you with the ESA, which is the European Satellite uh, Space uh, Association, that countries get together to fund it together through their public funding, through their taxes, so that at the end they can have more money for it because they are aware how very important that is. And we wanted to show to you, judges, and to the proposition side that it is aware be, uh, very important because of two things, our two arguments. First is saving the human race. Like we said, we are running out of supplies, and there it was the first point, and the second point was the TRFC were talking that there is a greater chance of the asteroid hitting the Earth rather than, uh, rather than dying from global climate, and that we must seek in the universe for an alternative solution for the solution of our problems. And that is the thing that we were saying in our first argument, which have not been rebuttaled from their side, actually, side, I think actually the third speaker agreed with the Stephen Hawking theory. Now, our second argument was the, was the, uh, was the argument about why it is in public interest that we do have public funding of space exploration. Now, we believe that something is happening on a global scale. It should be a global concern. It is a global concern, and therefore, every single person in this... It should be on global, on global level uh, uh, solution to this problem. Now, uh, and therefore, we believe that it should be public. Now, I just want to say something about how they define the motion in the end. Now, they said that they want to stop it completely. And in that way, you may be not aware of it now, that they put a much larger burden on them, burden on themselves on that way. Because they, when they wanted to show that we should stop every single funding of space exploration, they should show just the public one, but also the private one. And unfortunately, with their, with their case, they have not proposed to you how actually private investments, either uh, how actually any of the investment, any funding of space exploration is going to endanger the Earth. They have just done it with logical fallacies, with false uh, evidence, which we do not want to have in debate, and please oppose. Okay, we thank the leader for his speech and would like to call up the proposition reply speaker to conclude this debate. Today in the Czech Republic, and what I see here is a free water. And uh, the point is, and that's uh, something like we live in the Earth, and we go to another, we go to another planet, and we find there water. But I don't need to go to the Czech Republic every time I need some water, dear ladies and gentlemen. That's the point. And moreover, our Opponents, they probably did not understand that um, the moon and the earth, they are in one solar system. And if something happened to earth, it will probably happen to the moon. And it's something like if something happens to the whole Eurasia, and I won't have any Ukraine, and I won't have any Czech Republic to go for water for that. And moreover, just having water on that moon 
will not help you to live because you don't have any oxygen, you don't have anything which can help you to uh, produce and grow some vegetables, for example, and to produce some food. So just water is not enough for the life, dear ladies and gentlemen, that's the point. Moreover, there was um, a very nice comparison of uh, comparison with the school and it's something like not everyone wants to go to the school and it's something like uh, but everyone has to go to school and it seems like uh, come on uh, hello what do you think about the space exploration do you want to become an astronaut no I don't know I don't want to I'm not interested okay then now you are going to the space and that's not the point because you are not going to make people to go to the uh, space if they do not want to and the comparison with the school is totally irrelevant with this topic moreover there was one very uh, big clash point about um, Oh, and it sounds like our opponents were trying to say that if we stop that exploration, it won't help uh, with those, uh, with those uh, rockets that are still in the space. But isn't it a nice thing to stop harming our Earth and not to and not to continue doing this, not to continue spending millions, billions of money and uh, make this money do some good things for the whole earth dear ladies and gentlemen uh, so the team of proposition it will probably win this debate because this, uh, the side of opposition failed to prove their point of view uh, contradicting themselves talking about the satellites which do not have any relevance to our topic, uh, using some very nice but still very useless examples and comparisons with the school. And this is one of the things that we should stop space exploration and we should stop any funding of that space exploration because it doesn't have any sense.